the men in the in uh, the Gadarenes. Those, that man, they couldn't bind him with chains. They couldn't bind him. They, I'm telling you, the will of man and the will of the enemy is so strong. But I'm here to tell you there's one that's stronger. The power of the blood. The power of the blood. And that man, when he saw Jesus, he ran to him. And he was set free. Does anybody have a desire that whatever is binding our loved ones would be set free? Binding the lost of our city, those that are far from God. Some of you once were bound by alcohol and drugs and other things. and God has set you free. We're here tonight to ask God to do the same for someone else. I promise you someone prayed for you. The least we can do it is pay it forward. Heavenly Father, tonight. We pray that they will recover themselves out of the snare. Lord, the truth is I cannot set them free. But nothing can stop them if they want to come to you. Nothing can stop them if they want to seek you. Nothing can stop them if they will pursue you, oh God. Lord, they may be captive by the enemy, but you're the one who tore down the gates of hell itself. You're the one who set at liberty the captive, Lord. You're the one who went to the very grave, to the very tomb, Lord Jesus. You're the one, Lord, who defeated death, hell, and the grave. And you are well able to set every soul free because you've already bought and paid for every soul that's willing. You've already redeemed their soul from destruction. If they would only ask, if they would only embrace, Lord, your mercy and grace. Oh, Lord, although they may be held captive by unbelief. Lord Jesus, I pray, God, let them believe again. Lord, let the blood of Jesus, Lord, we claim them through the blood. We claim them through our prayer. We claim them for the name of Jesus and for your glory. We pray, Lord, that they would become holy ground again, that they would be redeemed, Lord, by the blood of the Lamb. Not because of anything we've done, but because of your redemption power, because of the power of the blood, because of the power of the cross. Hallelujah. We pray that tonight. Number six, we pray claiming the tearing down of Satan's strongholds in that soul's life. 2 Corinthians 10, 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Would you say 10, 4 with me? 10, 4, that's an old CB thing. I mean, 10, 4 next door. Amen. Over and out. Amen. I think we need to say 10, 4. That means we're in agreement, right? Can we agree with that? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Let's claim this right now. Lord, we're coming against all the power of the enemy. Lord Jesus, we plead the blood over ourselves. We put on the whole armor of God, and we plead the blood of Jesus against all the power of the enemy. Lord, you would tear down the strongholds. Lord, whatever doctrines and lies that they believe, stumbling blocks. Lord, whatever strongholds are in the minds of the unsaved of our city. Oh, God, we ask you to tear them down. Whatever has blinded them, Lord, to the glorious gospel, whatever has kept them, Lord Jesus, from Lord Jesus being uh, humble and being broken before you. Though we rebuke the enemy, Lord Jesus, we claim, Lord, the tearing down of his lies. We rebuke, Lord, the spirit of lies and rebuke the spirit of pride and the warped ideas, Lord, that are keeping them and the sinners and all those who are far from you from knowing you as their Savior. Lord, we believe. We Come on, let's exercise our authority right now. You do have authority in the name of Jesus. Lord, we bind it right now. Lord, all the things that would come against those that we love. Lord, against those, Lord, in our families, those in our neighborhoods, those that we'll meet this week. We come against the strongholds in our city. In the name of Jesus, you are brought low. And God, we come against even the will of man. God, that you would reveal yourself. Use whatever ways that means that you must. But Lord, bring them into that place of humility. God, that they may seek your face, we pray. And finally, we pray perseveringly. That means it's not just for tonight. Luke 18, verse 7. Shall not God avenge his own elect who cry day and night unto him, crying day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? We're not going to give up. Amen. Can we just do that? say that to the Lord right now? Lord, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to stop praying for the lost. Lord, now I'm going to stop praying for the lost sheep, the lost coins, and Lord, the lost prodigals. Lord, the lost brothers and sisters, lost family members, Lord. We're not going to stop praying for the lost sheep, Lord, those who have never known you. We're not going to stop praying for those in the church that have grown cold or, Lord, have lost the power that they once had or lost a gift or, or ability, Lord, or lost their passion. God, we're going to restore that. And Lord, finally, 
We are not, we're not going to stop praying, Lord, for our prodigals. Lord, we're gonna start, not going to stop praying for our lost sons and daughters, Lord. We know that you're going to bring them back home. We're going to persevere. We're never going to give up, God, because, Lord, if we give up, there's no promise. But if we will pray, Lord, there is a promise that you will hear us. You will hear our cry before your day and night, Lord, and you will answer our cry as we build up a memorial before you on their behalf. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we just thank him? Lord, I believe you've heard my prayer tonight. And I thank you that you've already spoken to them even this very hour. Even this very hour. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can add all that, that on to your devotional prayer. That'll add another 10 or 15 minutes easily to your prayer time. Amen. God bless you. I'm going to start service here in a minute. Amen. If you need to say hello. Anybody say it now? Let's stand together if you're able and willing. Amen. Let's lift up holy hands without wrath and without doubt and let's magnify the Lord. Come on, would you magnify the Lord with me? Would you exalt his name together? Though we've come with the praise, with a shout in our heart, we are victorious through Christ. We have a destiny, Lord, that's before us. We have a hope before us, Lord. We know that we can change by the power of your presence in our lives. We know that anything is possible in this place tonight. Signs and wonders and miracles and demonstration are available to us tonight. Oh, God, we put our trust in you. You are faithful and you are true and you are holy. Would you receive our praise and worship tonight as we do it with a joyful sound, Lord, with a joyful sound, with hope in our hearts. Hallelujah. Let's magnify the Lord. magnify the Lord. Yeah. Praise his holy name. Lift Jesus higher, lift Jesus higher. I just came to magnify, I just came to glorify, I just came to praise the Lord. Oh, I came to magnify the Lord, praise His holy name. Lift Jesus higher. Jesus higher, I just came to magnify, I just came to glorify, I just came to praise the Lord, oh, for He is worthy, worthy of all our praise, yes, He is worthy, He's worthy of all our praise, our God. Worthy, worthy of all our praise, yes, she is worthy, yes, you are, worthy of all my praise, never will a rock cry out in my place, he's worthy of all my praise, never will a rock cry out in my place, hallelujah, of all my praise, never will a rock cry out He's worthy of all my praise. Oh, never will a rock cry out in my place. He's worthy of all my praise. I just came to magnify. I just came to glorify. I just came to praise the Lord. you cared for me in such a special way 
Yes, I praise you. I lift you up. I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me. Such a special thing. Yes, I praise you. I lift you up. I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. The price for me way back on Calvary, and yes, I praise you, I lift you up, I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me way back home, Calvary. And yes, I praise you. I lift you up. I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. special way yes I praise you I lift you up I magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise I praise you I lift you up I magnify your name that's why my Before you're seated, let's go to God in prayer. Anybody on my left side here that has a prayer request you'd like to share today? Yes. Donna's family and Greg. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. We're going to pray for these needs right now. Then we'll take this side in just a moment. Two or three usually is about as many as we can really get, get into. So let's really get into this right now. Lord, this is a house of yes, prayer. Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we are burdened for this family. Lord, for the Anderson family and all those connected, to Lord Jesus, to Donna tonight her family, Lord Jesus, children and relatives and whoever else may be involved. Be with them right now, Lord. God, you're with them during this time. Lord, may they look to you and find in you a help and a hope. Lord, beyond this life. We pray for Greg tonight who's in the hospital. Lord, COVID complications, whatever may be involved there, you know exactly what's going on in Greg's life. Lord, we speak into that situation. Lord, we believe you'll send ministering angels right now to where he is. And he will know that it's you that does the work. I pray this in Jesus' name. And Lord, Jesus, I pray. I ask you for Conrad's sister, Lord, tonight. You know exactly the situation, exactly what's going on there, Lord. And you're well able to strengthen and help. You're able to, Lord, comfort. And Lord, bring, Lord, a, a resolution to whatever the situation may be. God, you are faithful. Come on, let's push just a little bit. Lord, we have faith in this situation, that you are greater than this situation, that you're more powerful. We call upon your name, Jesus, and we plead the blood in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen. Amen. Anybody on my right side that has a prayer request tonight? Let's remember Wilma. Let's remember Jesse. Let's continue to remember Iva, who's having trouble with her eyes. Of course, that's why she's not here tonight. Ears? Oh, that's right. That's right. She mentioned that. Dalton? Dalton? Okay. Okay. Let's remember Dalton. Okay. Anyone else on this right side? Sinners. Don and Wally? Yeah, and the loss of their son. Amen. Anybody? Dave Brown. That's right. Okay. What's that? He lost his brother? Oh, my. He's had a tough couple months. Wow. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Anyone else? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Come on, let's carry these burdens as our own. These are our family, Lord, as we come before you, brothers and sisters in Christ, and those connected to those who are brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord Jesus, we ask for Dalton, Lord Jesus. You would be with Lord him during this time. Lord, overshadow and strengthen. Lord, rebuke any infection, disease, sickness. Lord, heartache, anything that would hinder his faith. Oh, we pray this in Jesus' name. We're asking for Don and Wally, Lord Jesus. Uh, continue, uh, Lord, that you would bring comfort in their hearts. Lord, you are the comforter. What they need is more of you, more than ever before. Bring comfort to their hearts and minds. Draw closer than we pray. I love you. Remember David Brown tonight, Lord. He's the loss of his brother, Lord Jesus. I, I, Lord Jesus, he's such a tender heart. I pray, God, you would strengthen him, Lord, and encourage him. We bear the infirmities of those who are weak among us, Lord. We strengthen them. We encourage them. We pray. We pray for Wilma and Jesse and Ida tonight. Lord, not only for their physical needs, Lord Jesus, their spiritual needs, but Lord, also for their families, God. You know where they are, Lord Jesus. Their lost loved ones that burden their hearts, Lord, every single one of these precious ladies. God, strengthen them, Lord. Show yourself strong on their behalf. Raise their children up to follow after you. And Lord, in Jesus' several cases, Lord, draw their families, their husbands close to you. I pray, God, bring loving kindness and tender mercies into their situations. And now can we just praise Him and thank Him for the victory. Thank you, Lord. We have faith that you have heard us. We have a confidence and hope that our God is well able and you are willing and you are faithful and just. And whatever we ask in your name, two or three agree. Concerning any one thing, you said you would do it. We stand upon your promises and your word. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. amen. Turn around to a neighbor, shake a hand, bump a fist, bump elbows if you don't want to touch them, amen. Knock heads if you want, I don't care. Amen. It's been known to happen in a church. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for being here tonight. Wow, look at this right side. It's all full tonight. <laughs> you guys are going to have to recruit more people on your side over here with the way things are going. <laughs> awesome. We do encourage you, of course, you can bring guests anytime you want now. Most of you have a little room on your pew. Fill it up. Amen. Claim it. Amen. And we want God to do a great work. And of course, one of great opportunities are coming up. We got a guest speaker now. He'll be doing it probably online at this point, it looks like. Um, I don't have we don't have the money finances to fly him in. <laughs> so, uh, but Brother McGuire will be here in a couple of weeks, so we look forward to that. Um, so uh, keep that in mind as we're moving forward. And uh, also uh, we got of course Palm Sunday which will be the same day and then also Easter Sunday just a month away so start your campaign of loving on someone with an ulterior motive it's okay to have an ulterior motive for saving somebody isn't it I mean if your ulterior motive is to love them I don't think anybody would well I don't know that's a pretty da terrible ulterior motive I mean why would you want to love anybody but I think that that's what we're called to do so we encourage you if you want to invite them to your small group invite them out for coffee make some connections amen make some connections Amen. A lot of people in this day and age want to know people before they come to church. So make sure that you're their friend and love on them. Jesus went around doing a lot of work outside the building. But, amen, I believe we should be the same. That's the power. We are the building, right? We are the temple of God. Amen. We're looking forward to that. So of course, let's not forget what's going on Wednesday night. What's Wednesday night? 
business meeting. Business meeting. Oh, I don't know if I want to come to that. That sounds too boring. No, we're going to have a great time. We're going to pray together. Usually the business doesn't take that long, although it sounds like several of you want to bring some things up. That's fine if you want to do that. Um, uh, but uh, we want to look forward to what God's going to do, and then we'll have a time with them. Usually we do some testimonies, and we have a few thoughts that are shared, and we do uh, various things, and I may have a word from God. Who knows? Imagine that. Amen. We'll probably maybe even follow up with a little bit from this Sunday, this morning. Amen. Could we pray right now and ask the Lord to bless each other, to bless the offerings that have been given, to bless those who have given up their tithes and offerings. Heavenly Father, I pray your blessing upon all those that are here tonight. Receive our offerings, not only, Lord Jesus, of our possessions and time, but Lord Jesus, of the treasures of our heart, of everything that we have, Lord, of our life itself. We, everything that we have belongs to you. We are only stewards of everything that's in our care. For everything we have, you have given to us. And God, we know that if we will give to you, and we, you know that you can flow through us, you will bless us, Lord. Press down, shaken together, and running over. Lord, people will give to us, and you will show yourself strong. I pray your blessing in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. God bless you. Let's sing one more time. You are worthy. some worship in the house tonight somebody came and put their garment of praise on maybe you put off your garment of mourning amen in a spirit of heaviness and lifted up your voice to God what a joyful time it's been together today in the house of the Lord I'm going to ask my wife to come at this time she's going to share a few words with you from the word of the Lord amen thank you my beautiful wife for taking this tonight amen we appreciate it Praise Jesus. <laughs> he is so worthy to be praised. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, I brought our trusty psalm book up here with me. This is what I was raised on. <laughs> but you know what? I like it all. I'm not going to talk about music tonight. But I am going to read a read some words to a song at the end Lord willing <coughs> um, y'all know this is not my favorite thing to do however 
the Lord keeps opening some doors for me to speak. I have no idea why, but he knows. And I told Sister Carter, she had asked me to speak at something. Um, I got to a place where I said to Jesus, it's not about me. <laughs> it's not about my comfort zone. Amen? Can y'all say that? It's not about my comfort zone. It's about the kingdom. It's about souls. So whatever door you open, I will walk through it. And my husband asked me to share tonight, and he had in his mind, I think, something that I had spoke this week to some, um, some of the teenage girls at the Cherish Conference. But he said, just speak what's on my heart. Well, the Lord started talking to me this afternoon, so I just put this together this afternoon. And I just, um, I want y'all to know that I love you and I pray for you. But I'm asking God every day to give me boldness to speak his word without fear or favor. And he's doing that. He has given me boldness to speak the truth, to be a witness everywhere I go. And you know, this culture, and it's all around us. And sometimes we find it in us very contrary to God's word. Amen. And so we have to be aligned with the word of God. That is it. That's just it right there. That's, that's the thing, the very thing, as the song says. Amen. So I pray that the Lord uh, would just take what he, I'll, I'm just going to speak what he gave me today. And if you want to stand, you can. We're going to go to Leviticus chapter 6. And I'm going to put a title on this, and I'm going to call it Pentecostal Fire. That's my title tonight, Pentecostal Fire. And I don't know if I can give it to you the way I feel it, but I will do my best. Leviticus chapter 6, verse 13. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Say that last part with me. It shall never go out. Hallelujah. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray, God. Let our hearts be open to your word tonight. Have your way in me. Have your way in this place. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. So God has always revealed himself and his power through both natural fire and supernatural fire. And when the children of Israel left Egypt, if you remember... And maybe I'll ask you some questions tonight. You don't have to raise your hand, but answer them in your head. Why did God tell Moses, what was the reason he gave Pharaoh? You need to let my people go. Why? To go and worship the one true living God. Amen? They were to come out of their bondage and go and to worship. And as soon, you'll notice, as soon as they came out, there was a pillar of fire and a cloud, but a pure pillar of fire by night. God showed himself um, and revealed himself through the fire. In the Old Testament, he appeared to Moses before this ever happened with fire in a bush. There was the pillar of fire. He destroyed evil cities and evil people with fire. Jeremiah 23, 29, God says, Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord? In Exodus, the Lord descended upon Mount Sinai in fire. And chapter 24 says, And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mountain. In Leviticus chapter 6, verse 8, God told Moses, Command Aaron and his son, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. The burnt offering shall be on the hearth upon the altar all night until morning and the fire of the altar shall be kept burning on it verse 12 the fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it it shall not be put out verse 13 a fire shall always be burning on the altar it shall never go out this is God himself speaking. When God repeats himself, you know he wants us to get it. Leviticus 9 and 24, after the Israelites spent a whole day of offering sacrifices unto, unto the Lord that were pleasing to him, by the way. Not all sacrifices are pleasing to the Lord. But they spent all day offering sacrifices that were pleasing to the Lord. 
the Bible says, then the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. How many long to see the glory of the Lord? Such a yearning in my heart. And fire came out from before the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. When all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. Well, so far, we see two things about fire. We see, number one, fire is used by God to reveal his presence. His presence. Kind of an important thing. Moses said, if you don't go with us, I don't want to go. That's how important the presence of the Lord was to him. And number two, fire is used by God to reveal his glory in the things that are pleasing to him. So now we go to Leviticus chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. We see a different kind of fire. This is important to know. Aaron's sons, and of course Aaron was anointed of God, right? To serve in the temple. And so were his sons. His sons Nadab and Abihu, it says they took their censers, they put fire in them, and they added incense. They did it. And they offered what the Bible calls strange fire before the Lord. Contrary to his command. They weren't doing it his way. It was still fire. This wasn't God's way. So holy fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them and they died before the Lord. So now we see number three, fire is used by God to destroy what is not of God, what is fake before the Lord, what is contrary to his instructions and isn't holy. There can be no imitation of the fire of God. It is holy and it's only acceptable if he says it's acceptable. Praise God. Praise God. In the Old Testament, we continue to see God requiring his people to keep his fire burning and to continually, every day, offer up sacrifices on the altar where the fire of God would consume them. And I love this part. Time after time, the Bible says it was a pleasing aroma going up before the Lord. You can see that over and over again. It says it was a pleasing aroma going up before the Lord. Amen. I pray that in my prayer time sometimes, Lord, let it be pleasing in your sight. Not all worship is pleasing to him. And, and he still has requirements. Amen. Even though we don't live in the Old Testament anymore, God is holy. We are expected to worship him in the beauty of holiness. And he's looking for people to worship him in spirit and in truth. We're still talking about worship, but we're talking about the fire of the Lord. And now we go to the New Testament, and we see as soon as Jesus exits the scene and ascends into heaven, we see his disciples coming together. Now, they would know the scriptures. His disciples knew the scriptures. They know what God requires. And now what are they doing? As soon as he leaves, they are obeying his command. They went and presented themselves as living sacrifices to God in prayer waiting, tearing on the Lord. And then we see his fire coming down on the day of Pentecost, showing his glory and showing his pleasure in them and causing his fire to spread around up, up on thousands around them. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them cloven tongues as of fire, and set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now we see God's fire manifested in the new covenant. Now they're not offering animals or they're, they're getting, that's be, being done away with. Amen. As soon as they receive this revelation, and we'll read that in a little bit, the revelation that Paul had in Romans. But that is how God manifests his power is the fire. The Holy Ghost is synonymous with the fire. 
My question to you tonight is, do you have the fire of Pentecost inside of you? The fire of the living God burning in you. When you have a fire burning in you, or anyway, if you have a fire burning around you, everyone notices it. You can't keep a fire hidden. You smell it before you even see it. You see it, you hear it, you see its effects, and it even may be contained in a little bitty living space as they say, or it may be let loose everywhere, but all around you, everyone knows it's there. Can I get an amen? You know when there's a fire, don't you? You can see it, you can hear it, you can smell it. It is God's will for every child of God to have a fire burning and churning inside of them. And that is what, that's what's burning on the inside of me tonight. In case you haven't noticed, I have a fire inside of me. And I know everyone exhibits it, it different. But I'm telling you what, God wants you to know that when you have the fire of the Holy Spirit, people are going to be able to tell that you have the fire of God. You, they, it said it was spread abroad all over the place when the fire of the Holy Ghost fell. But I want to tell you, it's a lot of work to keep the fire going because the world is cold. People are cold. And that's everywhere. Everywhere you go, there, people are cold. And the colder the elements are, the harder you have to work to keep the fire going. I am determined by the mercy of God to keep my fire going. Hallelujah. 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 What do you need to build a fire? I'm going to give you three things that I believe God gave me. First, you have to have a desire. Do you see a need for the fire? And I pray that whoever, I don't know who this is for tonight. Maybe it's, maybe it's not for you. If you have fire just turning and burning, and it may be for someone online. It may be for someone who's listening to this down the road. But if you're here tonight and you are not sure about the fire of God, first, you have to have a desire. Do you see a need for the fire? Are things cold in this world? Are they cold in your home? Are they cold in your soul? Before a fire has ever started, someone has to see the need for it. Someone has to say, we got to start a fire. It's time to start a fire. We got to cook some things. We got to get warm. We cannot die because if you get too cold, you will die. So there has to be a desire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the second thing is a sacrifice. And this is where it gets uncomfortable. Because in the Old Testament, every time they brought a sacrifice, and, and they had to have a fire going all the time, and sometimes the fire of the Lord would come down. But that thing had to die. <laughs> it couldn't stay the same. And what have we been talking about, about around here? You can't stay the same and keep the fire of the living Holy Ghost in you. you something has to die. Because that thing is going to be consumed. That's why it's called a sacrifice. And that's the hardest thing because who wants to die? Who wants to die that someone else might live? But what a great example that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, do as I do. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. You have to die together with Christ. Hallelujah. The thing on the altar has to die. It has to die to the flesh. It has to die to, the, to your own will. It has to die to the things of this world. We have to say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Before the fire of God could fall in the Old Testament, there had to be a sacrifice. And for it to be acceptable, it could not remain alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number three, what else do we need for a fire? You have to have fuel. And let me tell you that passionate, persistent prayer is the only fuel that's going to ignite the spark of the Holy Ghost in us that will grow into a hot, burning fire. If the idea of prayer makes you tired or bored, then, my friend, you don't understand the beauty of Pentecost. What made them wait for at least seven days in one room to get that fire? They had a vision. They had a mandate from the Holy One. Go and wait until the fire falls. And they prayed and they prayed until they received the promise. Hallelujah. And then it spread like wildfire fire to all those around them. 
Hallelujah. That's all you really need to start a fire. The desire and lay down your life as a living sacrifice and pray without ceasing as the Bible has told us to do. And I promise you, he will honor that. He will come. You might have to wait for a while. You might have to tarry until. But God will be faithful to send the fire. And I'm telling you, my husband and I have been in places that have been so dry, so cold. And but you just get on your knees and you're better. And I know what some, some of you guys know what I'm talking about. Just get in your prayer closet and you will begin to feel that spark and that warmth. And God will say, I am with you and I still have something for you to do. Don't give up. Hallelujah. He can bring a fire no matter where you are. No matter where you are. It doesn't matter what's going on around you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fire of God synonymous with the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you tonight, it's not something that's optional. If you want to be carried away when Jesus comes back for his bride, I tell my small group this, you need the Holy Ghost. You need to speak in tongues. You need to get the heavenly fire burning in your soul if you want to be carried away when Jesus comes back for his bride. Romans 8, 9, and 10. You are not in the flesh, but you are in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of righteousness but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you hallelujah I ask the Lord today can PCIM be a place where the Pentecostal fire can fall Will there be a holy sacrifice? Will there be passionate, persistent prayer? Will there be a death of the things that displease you and a pleasing aroma going up before the Lord? Hallelujah. This is my desire. I long for it so very much. I am determined my fire is not going to go out. Day and night, day and night, I will keep the fire burning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. My father-in-law, Bishop Tracy, he was famous for saying this. And you know, he stirred up things. He did. And he taught us well, right? Don't say amen. But he said this. You already have right now today as much fire as you want. He said that all the time in our church. Because God's not holding back and is free to whosoever will. Nobody's stopping you from catching on fire. Nobody needs to start your spark. You already have the Holy Spirit available to you. You have the Word of God. You have prayer. You have God himself. You have whatever. All that's required sometimes is a living sacrifice that's willing to die. But if you will present your body, your life, as a living sacrifice to God and withhold nothing from him, he wants it all. You can't, you know, people talk about being reserved. Well, I used to be reserved, so that kind of resonates with me. But you know what reserve means? It's you're holding something back. That's what reserve means. If you make a reservation at a restaurant, they're going to hold that table back for you. But I'm telling you, God is saying to us, you can't have anything in reserve in the back room. You have to give it all to him. Present it all as a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. Withholding nothing from God. And if you will pray without ceasing, which is the fuel to the fire, the Pentecostal fire will fall upon your life and it will spread to those around you. Amen, amen, amen. Can we worship the Lord for a moment? Do you have a desire to have that burning fire? Oh, hallelujah. My fire will never go out day and night by the mercy and grace of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Well, I spoke with someone the other day, and, you know, I've been called a lot of things, uh, but probably one of the things people say the most to me is that I'm radical. And I don't really know exactly what that means, but I think that you're going to have to be radical in this day and hour. I really do. Radical is like you're all in. You're all in. And I don't think it's strange. I want to read you the words to this song, and probably most of you or a lot of you will know this song. This is the kind of stuff I grew up on, and people in the church would (laughs) dance to this, would shout to this, run around the building to this. And the name of this song is The Pentecostal Fire. And if you think I'm radical, you should talk to some of those people back then that are already gone on to their reward. Talk about radical. There was nothing going to quench their fire. And they weren't going to quench the Holy Spirit ever. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what the consequences were in this life. And so, I don't know, we don't have books, but um, I will just read the the words. Hallelujah, Jesus. There are souls in sin which we fail to win just because we lack desire. And the thing we need, sorely need indeed, is the Pentecostal fire. That's the thing, the very thing. That is what we must acquire. Let us pray once more as they prayed of yore for the Pentecostal fire. He will send it down and our lives will crown with the blessing day by day if we truly plead for the things we need in the earnest old-time way. Let us seek the face of the King of grace. Let us do his holy will. Then the fire will come on each heart and home, for he loves the faithful still. If your heart is cold and you've lost the power, God will give you your desire. If you just seek his face every day and every hour, he will send the old-time fire. If you know the course with me, say it with me. That's the thing, the very thing. That is what we must acquire. Let us pray once more as they prayed of yore for the Pentecostal fire. Hallelujah. Amen. What's our response? Let's let's take a moment to, to lean forward or find a place to pray for just a few moments, could we? Amen. I don't know about you, but I need a greater fire. I want a greater passion in my heart. Heavenly Father. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We need the fire. Lord, another song. Oh, Lord, send the fire just now. Oh, Lord, send the fire just now. And baptize everyone. This is what should unify the church. The same passion for fires. I would that everybody in this church was a pyromaniac, a fire passionate about the fire, wanting to start fires everywhere you go. Oh, would you pray that God would give you that kind of passion for the fire? Come on, are you hungry? Does there anybody have a desire for the fire? Do you have a desire for fire? Do you have a desire for the fire? Do you have a desire for, for food that's that's properly properly made? Do you have a desire for a sacrifice? Oh God, I will be that sacrifice. Oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Let us scream. The Lord will send the fire. If there's a sacrifice, would you, does anybody join me? Come on, church. We're not playing church here tonight. We're not just coming to church. We are the church. We are the sacrifice. Lord, we come before you. I will go where you want me to go. I will be what you want me to be. Lord, you are with me, Lord. You are with me, Lord. Or mountain or veil or stream. Lord Jesus. No matter the cost. I want to save the lost. Surrender, God. Lord, they might all be saved. They might all be saved. Lord, you're speaking so clearly to us tonight. What are we waiting for? Oh God. Do we need the deep voice of God? Do we need him to split the rock? What do we need before we believe that we've heard from you, oh God? Do we have a desire? Is there a sacrifice? 
de la mandada curia de esa de la zorra de la marina We need the Pentecostal fire, folks. We're one month away from Easter, and that's 50 days from Pentecost. What could, what do you think God would like to do through us? If we, what could God do to a church that was unified? We were all in the fire. I pray that there would be a fourth in the fire with us. I pray there'd be somebody. I believe that if we would allow God, He would be with us in the fire. The enemy's fire, we need not fear, but we should fear the fire of the Holy Spirit. We should fear the fire of God that's coming upon this world. This time, He's not going to destroy with water, folks. He's coming with a fire, a cleansing fire. He's got a winnowing fan in His hand to, to, to fan the flames to burn everything on the floor. Lord, we see all the kinds of fire in our world today. We see strange fire. We see holy fire. God, we see the fire that's on the altar that the coals. Lord Jesus, we would never let it go out. Come on, church, are we willing to change? Are you on fire? Be honest with yourself. Are you on fire? Is there something burning in you? Is there a heat in you? A passion in you? wait on the Lord we've got time there's plenty of time oh let there be nothing in our life that gets us more passionate than talking about God not politics not our family members not food not not, not anything in this world oh God let me be most passionate most excited about being in your presence hey taramani kurasu desperate? Is anybody hungry? Is anybody cold? Is anybody tired of church as usual? Anybody tired of being coming to church and just doing your usual thing? Does anybody want a church that's powerful? Anybody want a church where the fire moves? Let me just tell you, you're the key. You are the key. Come on, let's talk to God. Lord, I am the key. Lord Jesus, I am. this interesting thing in our world it's a law that God put in place it's called the law of conservation nothing is lost 
it becomes a different form. But nothing is lost. And the interesting thing is, when something is burns, it just changes its form. It becomes gases or heat. But nothing's really lost. You can actually calculate it. It's not actually lost. It just changes its form. I'm here to tell you tonight that God is saying to us, if you'll get the fire back, some things are going to change. We're going to go from be being natural, which is to something that you can't really see, the gas, the spiritual. It's God's desire. You want to move and live in the Spirit. We want to be led of the Spirit every day. You got unsaved family members? You better be on board with what God is saying to us tonight. Or you're da damning your family to destruction. Because you are the key. You are the answer. Don't go looking at the pastor. I'm tired of being your answer. I'm not your answer. I'm not the answer for your relatives. I'm not the answer for your son, Irvin. I'm not the answer for your, your son. I'm not the answer for... You know who the answer is? It's the person sitting in the seat you're sitting on. We're the source of the fire. Oh, that God would transform our sacrifice into a sweet-smelling aroma that ascends to the heavens itself. And God says, Ah, yes. I hear their prayer. If you come asking of the king without a present, without a sacrifice, I promise you, you're going to be in trouble with God. But if we come before God, offering ourselves as a living sacrifice and saying, Oh God, send the fire again. Let me pray like I once prayed. Let me, Lord, fast like I once fasted. Change me, Lord, from what I am into something supernatural, into something powerful. I want to be transformed the law of conservation that we would tr be transformed into heat and light and we would be vapors we would become something that would make the change in our world that would ascend to the heavens themselves could we pray right now one more time uh, i'll let you go in just a moment could we pray one more time like the lives of our families depend on it like our community depends on it like our city depends on it Here's yes, my sacrifice, Jesus. God. Yes, Jesus. Ask of me what you will, oh, Lord. I know it's dangerous to say that because you are a living God. But God, everything I have is yours anyway. Why not put it all on the line? God, I, if, this is the, if this is the last hour, I don't want to be caught holding something back, Amen. reserving Amen. something. Amen. I want to put it all on the altar. Lord. I'd rather die penniless and broken you, or than die in a rich house in a wide space with my bank account full. If I didn't have a soul, if I didn't have my family with me, if I didn't have my friends and neighbors with me, God, give me a burden. Give me a fresh burden. Transform me from the state I'm in to a new state, a new level, a spiritual dimension. If you're not moved right now, and if there's not something stirring in you, that's you need to seek God's face so desperately, so desperately, because you're cold. You're so cold, you don't even know when the fire's nearby. You're so cold, you're, you're stone, honey. I'm not telling you right now, God is speaking to us. This is the day. This is the hour. This is the time. This is the season. Lord, let there be a fresh desire, a fresh burden, a fresh hunger. Lord, and may we offer ourselves as a sacrifice, being willing to pay the price that others can be saved. And we know that your fire will fall. We know that your fire will fall if there is a sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may not be able to sing this, but I'm going to sing it. 
And if you are sincere, you can sing it too. By the way, God is listening. Amen. So don't sing it if you don't mean it. You just pretend you've got a frog in your throat or something. Amen. <laughs> oh, Lord, send the fire just now. Oh, Lord, send the fire just now. Oh, Lord, send the fire just now and baptize everyone. Let's sing it again. And oh, Lord, send the fire just now. Oh, yeah, I love it. It sounded more like Pentecost every minute. Send the fire just now. Oh, Lord, send the fire just now and baptize everyone. Let's sing it again and oh, Lord, send the fire just now. Oh, Lord, send the fire just now. Oh, Lord, send the fire just now and baptize everyone. I don't know the verses, but there's some beautiful verses in there. Amen. Could we just be in prayer this week? How many will be willing to join me in asking God if there's enough desire in your heart? You know how you know? Because you'll become the sacrifice. Whatever the cost. Whatever the cost. If I can reach one. You know what I'm concerned about? I've been around a lot. I almost mentioned it this morning, and I'm glad I didn't. I, I, I'm, I'm amazed by when we pray for other people, how quickly we stop praying. It bothers me. And yet when the message turns around to how God wants to bless you and how God's died for you, oh, there's a white sweet moving and a swell on the spirit. But that's our spirit. Because I'll tell you what God's spirit does is when you talk about the loss, there's a passion. There's a fire that burns because that's God's desire. It's not any 